welcome everyone for this uh, session or webinar on the topic conducting meaningful retrospections as you would have realized this particular session is not just about uh, what is retrospection or how to conduct retrospections or just conducting uh, retrospections and how to see uh, what to do with it there is a specific reference here we are going to talk about how to conduct meaningful retros okay so the retros have to be meaningful they need to deliver some value out of it and that's something we are going to focus in today's webinar uh, so we're going to focus on different ways for conducting retro meeting how to make sure that retros are vibrant uh, we also are going to look at how to conduct retros in scaled environment where we would have multiple teams or multiple location and multiple geographic teams how to process the retro feedback and tips or tips for making retrospection meetings effective so first of all i'm sure you would have heard some of these questions some of these statements when people come to retrospection meetings so when they come to a retro meeting you would have heard some people saying oh you know can we skip retro just for this print you know we have some really important work to finish we have some work that is still uh, yet to be completed we have a demo coming up or things like that can we just skip retro just for this print and we'll do it for next print uh, you might also have heard some comments where people say oh you know i don't have new point to add whatever my colleague said just before me i just agree to him you know i don't have any new or unique point to add to that there might also be some people thinking oh you know you guys are asking me for a retro feedback again this time but what happened to the feedback that i shared last time you know i don't see anything happen uh, on my feedback that i presented last time you will also see that some people will think that oh you know uh, this retro is just a waste of time it's taking away one hour from my active coding or active testing time you know just a waste of time and you might also have seen if you have managers or scrum masters or any other leaders who are having uh, a command and control behavior you you would see them saying that oh you know uh, mahesh or rahul or whoever i don't agree to your point you know you are saying that our environment was bad our processes were not really um, in place and that's why we had a lot of issues i don't agree with you i as a manager think that oh you know everything went fine or everything didn't went fine and you guys didn't do your job nice so if you have people who are in the retro with command and control behavior that you will see these kind of things exhibited there so if you have any of these elements in your meetings if your teams retros then guys please beware that these are actually resulting into ineffective uh, retrospection meetings and that, that is precisely the topic of our today's webinar we need to make sure that our retros are meaningful our team members feel that being in the retrospection meeting is not a waste of time and something tangible something meaningful can come out of it so moving on uh, first of all everyone needs to understand including the management including the customer and the team members that retrospection meetings are not a casual thing you know it's not something just for the sake of the process since after demo uh, we need to conduct a retrospection meeting and just be done with it that's not the point in agile environment continuous improvement is absolutely an important and a key element in waterfall environment or in sdlc environment what we typically do is we actually con conduct a project and at the end of the project we have a meeting called as lessons learned meeting or even the worst name post mortem meeting and like in any other post mortem the objective of a post mortem is when the patient is already dead you are trying to conduct a post mortem and try to identify what all things went wrong and even if you have identified what all things went wrong it might be too late you might not be able to do anything out of it similarly that is what happened with the retrospection meetings or less uh, post mortem meetings for many waterfall projects the team would conduct this particular post mortem meeting or lessons learned meeting at the end of the project for the sake of the process they might list down a lot of areas of improvement and then check in that document in some particular repository so that uh, we are not non compliant and then that's it and no one looks at that document ever again 
that's not what is expected in agile environment in agile environment after every iteration we are supposed to take a pause we are supposed to do a retrospection of how our iteration went the last uh, this time and what is that we can do better you know so first of all we have an element of inspect and adapt we want to make sure that we are doing continuous improvement we are trying to make our sprint better the next time it is also meant for a whole team learning so it is not enough that only the project leads or technical leads or project managers are sitting in a room and deciding what went well and what went wrong here we want the entire team to be present the entire team to be brainstorming and learning together and then identifying uh, what can be done further the retrospection meetings if done correctly actually become a catalyst for change if you want to work on either mindset change for people if you want to work on process change if you want to uh, work on tools and technology change the retros can actually become a good catalyst for that and retros are also meant to generate action it's not a place where people just come and talk and talk and talk and nothing uh, gets actioned then it's of no use it is meant for identifying specific actionable items and take it forward from there so that is precisely what a retrospection meeting is meant for and it's not a casual thing uh, when we try to identify the steps of retro or what all things should be heard when conducting a retrospection meeting there's a very good book called as agile retrospectives making good teams great by Dana Larson and Esther Derby which explains the whole process of how a, a retrospection meeting can be conducted it starts with setting the stage so it actually says that oh you know when we have completed the sprint let the entire team be together the scrum master or the person who is facilitating the retrospection meeting can set the stage he can tell that hey you know what is the objective of the retrospection meeting what are we going to do in next one hour or whatever time is allocated and how we want all the team members to participate and he can make sure that everyone feels comfortable to share their views positive or negative and everyone contributes to it the next point is to gather the data and present it to the team so it's not just a meeting where we come and we directly start discussing about what went well and what went wrong we actually want to look at our data and data could be our sprint burn down chart the data could be whatever tools we have been using uh, it could be jira version 1 rally uh, any test case management tools so we need to look at our data and objectively how our sprint reflects how our sprint uh, demonstrates what we did well and what we did not do well so that data should drive us to some insights and then the team should brainstorm on what should they do next what is that they would like to try for the next iteration and that is where we close the retrospective meeting and we have a perspective on what all things we want to do then we actually start our iteration again where we incorporate uh, the experiments ideas the thoughts and suggestions team members had build the iteration and deliver it and again start this whole process for the next iteration so there is a logical cycle to it it's not a random meeting or something that's a casual affair where people come down share some thoughts and then be done with it uh, and it is important to understand this especially if you are going to play a role of either a project manager a scrum master a team lead or anyone who is in a facilitator role in retrospection meeting you need to understand that if you put a structure to it there are better chances of you getting some tangible outcome out of it now when you are conducting a retrospection meeting you have multiple ways to conduct it and that's something uh, we're going to discuss about going forward one way and that is the recommended way is we should actually discuss about a quantitative aspects of it because it is a very common practice for people to have entire retrospection meeting happening just on a qualitative basis where people might just think about something about their impression about how the sprint went what they liked what they didn't like and things like that but it may not be looking at actual quantitative and very specific data so one way could be uh, to ask the team members hey you know we started this sprint with a specific goal and again this is one of the recommendation 
If you are not doing so, uh, you should definitely consider doing it. When you start a sprint, apart from conducting a sprint planning meeting, you should define a sprint goal. That in this particular sprint, we are going to add a specific capability to our product line. Let's say in this specific uh, iteration, this specific sprint, we are going to add a login functionality to our mobile application module that we are working with. So it needs to be a tangible or a specific sprint goal. And then the team needs to objectively decide that did we meet our sprint goal. And it will be a very specific goal. It cannot be we met little bit of it or we met some of it. It should be either yes or no. So either our product owner uh, or our customer is comfortable with the outcome and he thinks that, hey, you know, we have achieved our sprint goal or we have not achieved it, which means we might have to continue working on it for the next sprint as well. Another way for quantitative retrospection could be to look at some of the matrices and uh, the team can look at its burn down chart. The team can try to see how my burn down chart moved and did I actually make progress or did we see that the team was stuck? Did the burn down chart hit the ground or some of our stories were still left unfinished? What has been our velocity trend? Is our velocity improving, uh, degrading? It's on the same plateau. What is happening to our velocity train? What has been uh, the status of different items that were raised in last retrospection meeting? And this is again a good practice that all the team members should that, hey, you know, in our last meeting, we discussed about 10 items that we are going to try. Let's look at what happened to those. Did we try those items? Were we able to make progress on few of them? Where uh, some of those were still stuck and we need to revisit work on them? Or what happened to that? And we can also look at some of the qualitative metrics like defect count, defect density, uh, or the outcome that has been delivered and the quality of that outcome. This, this could be a quantitative overview uh, where the team members can look at this data, identify what has been the tangible outcome of this particular iteration instead of having a, a qualitative measure. When we talk about qualitative measure, one of the very standard way to conduct a retrospection meeting is to have three columns on the board where it talks about what worked well in the last sprint, what did not work well in the last sprint, and what are the items to try. What is that we would like to do for the next sprint? And uh, there are different school of thoughts even on these three items. There is one school of thoughts which says that you yeah, let's look at what worked well, what did not work well, and what are the items to try uh, next sprint. The another school of thought says that we don't want to focus on what did not work well uh, and which can lead to blame game and complaints and uh, explanation and things like that. Instead of that, why don't we focus on what worked well uh, and then what is that we are going to try the next time and what are some of the very specific or tangible actionable items. So that is what can be focused on. Uh, one more thing that can be tried and again a recommended practice is to have a team working agreement and what a team working agreement is basically all the team members come together and they decide their own working agreement for example when we are conducting a retrospection meeting for the first time we can ask the team hey you know do we have a working agreement of our team if not let's do that right away in the retro meeting itself and it can start with, hey, you know, what is the time at which we plan to have a daily stand-up meeting? Because if we have multi-location teams, if we have multi-geographical teams, multi-time zone teams, we'll have to identify a time slot that works with everyone. What is going to be our sprint duration? How we are going to make sure that all our team members are physically co-located as much as possible? If not, how they are going to utilize communication tools to be in connected with each other and sharing or communicating with each other with the right frequency. How we are going to make sure that everyone respects each other and be open with each other. So if there are any issues, challenges, problems, they share with each other very openly and candidly. So these could be some of the working agreements and it is always better to have a working agreement. So when the team members come for retro, uh, you will see them referring to that working agreement and then that might also help them to open up and share their feedback candidly and openly in the meeting. 
one of the other way and uh, one of the interesting ways to make the retrospection meeting a fun meeting could be to try out innovation games and the team members who are interested in understanding this concept a little bit further can read about it and you can also explore on innovationgames.com the concept is uh, basically we play certain games certain activities where all the team members brainstorm with each other they participate in an activity and share their feedback using some of the gamification concepts so as you see here we are using or our team is using a game called as speedboat it is a retrospection exercise where the team used a metaphor of a boat and you will see that a team wants to go towards an island which is its target and the team has some of the positive wins some of the positive push that it is having uh, which pushes it towards its objective and there are some challenges problems or anchors the way they are represented here so all the team members uh, take out their sticky notes and they use green sticky notes for positive wins which means what all things worked well in our last sprint and on the negative side what have been the anchors for us to reach towards our target and they are represented in uh, orange notes here and if you see some of the orange notes are stacked together which means multiple team members share the same feedback which also tells us the gravity of the situation so many team members are saying that this specific issue is really really impacting us which means we should really do something about it in the immediate next sprint which can actually drive something tangible uh, out of this meeting so instead of discussing on very wide range of items we can look at different items but if some of the items are stacked together if many people are sharing the same anchors then that means that definitely is an area that is impacting the entire team and we need to do something about it or we need to fix it um, as early or as quick as possible so that is something we would focus on uh, this is one of the interesting ways where the team members participate in a fun way one of the challenge with retrospection meetings is to have all team members speak up and share their thoughts inputs and ideas because what will happen is some of the team members who are very talkative who are very aggressive uh, who are having strong views they will come forward they share their thoughts and their inputs might just drive uh, everyone else or if someone starts first and he says oh you know i believe that this particular issue is really the critical issue and we should focus on it and then the next person is already influenced by it instead of that if you do it in an innovation game banner what will happen is all the team members will write their retrospection feedback items independently and at the same time they will place it on the board at the same time together which means everyone will have their views which also means all the people and people who are shy they're not so uh, comfortable in talking they can write down their inputs and post it on the wall and you can get everyone's thoughts inputs and some of the inputs can really be tricky ones or the ones that you did not get explicitly in form of any formal meetings but in some of the gamification manners you can get that feedback from team members again it's an effective way to get the feedback from team members and make sure we are keeping a lighter environment and identifying tangible action items out of it another way to look at it is in our team are we having any dysfunctional characteristics and there is a very interesting book called as the five dysfunctions of a team written by patrick lingioni uh, and it talks about various levels of dysfunction that we can have in a team what we did in one of uh, our retrospection meetings is we conducted an assessment on dysfunction characteristics so we had a dysfunction characteristics assessment for the entire team when all of us were together in the uh, room and we were playing this as a game and then it gave us a lot of inputs insights and some of them were really shocking when we see that team members may be having absence of trust between themselves or there is a lack of trust environment between the customer and the team itself that is actually a major major uh, problem area okay if you are not having trust then nothing else is going to work it's just a foundation of everything 
are your team members having fear of conflict you know do you, do they think that you know if i share my feedback candidly with developers or qa or with product owner he might not appreciate it is there lack of commitment is there avoidance of accountability and is there inattention to results so these are various characteristics and it could be uh, again interesting to have this dysfunctional characteristics assessment tried out with your team where you can get a lot of feedback from your team and again it can help in improving the team environment and the collaboration between the team members one of the other exercise we did was we used a tool called a johari window and johari window is a tool where you draw a big rectangle and have four quadrants there and the left corner the left top corner is where i basically share what i know about myself and what my team members also know about myself the next quadrant is what i don't know about myself but my team knows about myself and on the bottom side it could be what i know about myself but the team does not know and what i also don't know and the team also does not know and this is again an interesting exercise and uh, definitely recommended for one of the retrospection meetings where team members can get feedback about themselves from the entire team so all the team members will come forward and share feedback about me so the way it ha happens is we do it in a retro uh, we have this board drawn on the table i come forward i share what i know about myself and team also knows about myself at the same time i would share what i know about myself my but my team may not be knowing about myself so i kind of open up share something about myself then each team member comes up to the board and share his feedback about what he thinks he knows about myself and that can help the team members identify a lot of blind areas something he may not be aware of oh you know my team members think about this about me i never realized that i never thought that they have this kind of impression or view about me very interesting way um, and again it helps the team members to share feedback with each other be open and candid with each other and then improve collaboration effectively another aspect which was shared in the book agile retrospectives is to do an esvp assessment in the retrospection meeting so when you are conducting a retrospection meeting you can ask the team members to share their feedback about how is their attitude when they come for the retrospection meeting how do they feel when they are in that retro meeting do they think that they are explorer where they are enthusiastic in that retro meeting they are eager to discover new ideas they are eager to share their thoughts ideas views and they want to make a difference in the team or are they shopper where even if they get one nice idea they fine you know they are here to do some shopping um, and if they get some nice idea from someone that's fine they've learned something there could be some people who are vacationers you know they are not interested but instead of hearing something from my project manager or scrum master about my absence instead of that let me just go sit there share something and be done with it and there could be some people who really might be feeling that they are prisoners they have been forced to attend this retrospection meeting they think it's a complete waste of time and my manager or my scrum master has forced me to be there because you know the process says that everyone should be there uh, if that is what is happening that gives you a hint that something is not working well my retro is not going well uh, either it is becoming boring monotonous or people think that it is not really meaningful and generating something tangible out of it so it is interesting to think about it uh, a good way to conduct a esvp analysis and say how team members think about retro itself and what is their at uh, attitude when they come for a retro meeting okay there are many other ways for conducting retro what i would highly recommend all the team members is to make sure that the uh, retrospection meeting is a vibrant meeting what happens is typically a retro has a standard format where team members come together in a meeting room they share what worked well what didn't work well what can be done someone takes a note out of it shares it with everyone and then uh, they're done and everyone just goes out if we continue to follow the same format again and again and again team members might actually get bored they might think that uh, you know 
this is not interesting enough or I don't think uh, this is exciting where I really want to be there and I definitely want to go and attend the retro. You know, if I'm forced, I'll just go and sit there. Instead of that, you can try the format, you can try different variations and that can make it much more interesting. There could be various ways uh, like getting individual feedback from team members. What did they feel if they have any specific input, specific notes, specific observations. Uh, another way could be to get appreciations like uh, did someone help me in my last friend? Is that something I would like to mention in the retro? Oh, you know Kunal really did a good job. He actually immediately came and helped me um, and helped me resolve the issue because of which I could move forward very quickly and I would like to thank him in the retrospection meeting. That could be one of the interesting things you might try. Another word could be conceptual where we ask all the team members how would you describe our last retro in one single word. Some of them might say exciting, very good, outcome driven or some of them might say this was boring, this was uh, stressful, this was not meaningful. But you will get that one word will tell how they feel about that sprint. What is that they were expecting or what is that happened and how do they look at it in one single word. That could be one interesting thing to get from all the team members. Another way could be to get a rating uh, about the sprint on a scale of 1 to 5 from team members as well as from product owner. So we can say you know 1 being low and 5 being high. How would you rate our sprint? Someone might say 4, someone might say 5, someone might say 1 and that can give you a good idea of how they looked at it. Similarly, you can ask the team members to put a smiley for the sprint. Are they uh, thinking that the sprint was really good and we have a happy smiley, we have a sad, sad smiley or we have a neutral smiley? How do they think about it? And what we did is we had a big wall or big board where sprints, burn down chart and few other things were shown. We also showed the sprint smiley and that also gave everyone a feel about how people are thinking about uh, the sprint that we just completed. And the product owner also gave feedback about how much happy he was including his rating and that helped us to understand how he perceives uh, the outcome of the sprint from his perspective. Another way is to conduct a dot voting where team members come up with a lot of ideas and thoughts and inputs. They write it on post-it note, they post it on the wall and then the team members do a dot voting or as it is called as a mood voting where the team members do not speak anything. They just use a marker and they put a dot on the item that they think is most important or the item that impacted them the most or the item that definitely needs to be fixed or made an actionable item for the next sprint. And the, the note or the issue or the item having maximum dot votes are the ones that are selected for execution and tracking for the next sprint. Another way is to draw a scrum timeline where we can have day one of the sprint and last day of the sprint drawn in a timeline uh, kind of format and then team members can put some of the events that oh you know what happened we got requirement clarity on day three of the sprint and after that we actually started implementation so effectively first two days were completely faced or someone QA team member might say that hey you know I actually got the build on the last day of the sprint and I could not complete my testing because the, if the build is uh, reaching to me on the last day of the sprint I cannot finish all the testing and cannot certify that this is ready to be deployed or uh, considered as a potentially shippable item. So those timelines can give, give you an idea of what were some of the high points or low points on the overall timeline of the sprint and that can give you an idea of what is impacting team members and what can be done. You can also think of having some of the lighter activities like having Lego games, collaboration activities, innovation games the team members can play in a fun manner, share their feedback, thoughts, ideas with each other and then can uh, get something meaningful or tangible out of it. Another way could be focus on or focus off chart which means the team members can decide what are the items that they would like to focus on or what are the items that they would like to take off from their chart. For example, as a team members we would like to focus more on dialogue than debate. What is happening is in our stand up there is a lot of debate happening but there is no dialogue happening. So that is something we would like to focus on. 
So we would like to focus on dialogue and focus off from debate. So you can identify some of those areas. So these are various ways and various thoughts and ideas. And like I mentioned earlier, it is important to make sure that team members feel comfortable in being attending the retros or being there in those retros. So it might be a good idea to try out different formats, different of these activities, keep it vibrant where they will have something excitement uh, when they come for the sprint. And it's not a same boring retro format that is carried out again and again and again. Okay, now when we have the team members who are uh, online or who are distributed in nature, we might have to conduct uh, the retrospection meetings in distributed manner. Let's say I'm working on a project which has team members from India, from US and from UK. Then naturally we would have to identify the retrospection time which works with all the three uh, time zones. Or there might be scenario where some of the people from a certain time zone might not be able to join that particular meeting. In that case, you can use some of the online collaboration tools. So for example, what you see here is an innovation game of a speedboat is represented on an online format. So all the team members log into this particular portal at the same time and they share their feedback about what worked well and what didn't work well. So all of them can collaboratively keep on adding their points on what worked well, what didn't work well, what needs to be improved at the same time and then they can co collaborate on audio conferencing or video conferencing system and can identify uh, the areas to work on or the items to improve on. So again it is an important aspect that we would like all the team members to participate in it. So if they are uh, physically or geographically distributed, we would like them to to participate through some of the collaboration tools. Uh, you can use tools like WebEx, GoToMeeting, any collaboration tools where team members can come together and conduct a retrospection meeting in an effective manner. And you will also have scenario where some of the team members are actually not only just geographically distributed but they are distributed team wise which is a scaling environment where you might have a whole program that is running or a big product line that is being built and you might have 15 different teams and each team is having seven to nine team members. In that case, how do we conduct retrospection meeting? So then in that case, what we need to do is something called as the retrospection of retrospection. Like we do a scrum of scrum, we might have to do a retro of retro. And this is again a new concept, but this is something you might have to explore if you are doing scrum of scrum you might also have to consider retro of retro where the team members actually uh, consider retrospection for their team uh, level then they come to the retrospection at a program level and then we have a program level retro where product owner and the area product owner or program managers are participating and getting feedback from all the individual teams and their retrospection meeting if you're following some of the scaled agile methodologies like large scale scrum, like scaled agile framework or like disciplined agile delivery, uh, you would have multiple different teams and those teams might be having their own defined cadence where they are conducting sprint um, and their sprint start and end time might be synchronized across all the teams. So in that case what happens is all the team members uh, conduct their retrospection meetings at their team level and then they would share their feedback through some collaborative mechanism or through their scrum masters at a central level and at a program level. So basically at a program level the feedback uh, from all the different teams retrospectives is collected and reviewed at a program level and then if anything can be improved and uh, needs to be worked out can be handled, can be implemented, can be taken forward. So this is also one of the other aspects you will have to consider. If you are having scaling scenario, then you might also have to do retro of retro like we do scrum of scrum. One of the other ways to conduct uh, the retrospection meetings is an activity called as circles and soup. So as you see here, this diagram looks like actually circles and a dish which can serve a soup. That is where the name comes from. If you want to read more about it, uh, you can actually read it from the blog that is mentioned below. Uh, it says that, you know, we need to identify the different items that are being shared in the retrospection meeting and 
we need to classify them the innermost circle is basically for the items that team thinks that they have control on for example team members think that the the stand up meeting is not happening on time then this is something that team has a control on so team can take direct action they can define a mechanism where the all the team members come together for the stand up for the predefined time and if they are not on time they define something how they are going to handle that scenario but this is something that the team controls the next outer layer is where team might have an influence but team would really have to persuade someone or recommend someone else for action for example i need actually a continuous integration server and i do not control that there is some other systems team or continuous integration team that sets up a jenkins or any other continuous integration server for me so i can persuade them i can convince them to set it up sooner and make it available to me because that's not something i control i can just influence on the outer element could be the soup which means i do not have any influence i do not control that this is something completely out of my control and there could be scenarios where even though the team members think that there are items which are impacting them but they are not in control of the team they are not in, even in a manner where the team can influence them so the team members basically uh, will have to just request someone else or some other party to action on them and get a response or get a feedback on that so that could be one way where we classify those items and it can help us determine that oh you know some of the items are in my control let me just go and take action as a team other ones let's persuade someone else and track with those parties uh, there are multiple other ways to classify the feedback items the items that we get in the retrospection meeting we can classify them one way could be that oh you know the issues that team members shared during the retrospection meeting are these issues caused by agile are they exposed by agile or they're not related because when we start following agile a lot of issues would be exposed a lot of issues would be identified on earth so it would be worthwhile to see if some of the issues were caused because we started following agile or is it exposed by agile or it's not related uh, you can also classify the feedback items as either people related feedback items process related items or technology related items and the third as we discussed whether the team has a control or it doesn't have a control and how he can uh, or she can act on it so it is important not only just to identify the feedback items but even to classify them because that will give us idea on how we can act on it or how we can uh, make it actionable or something tangible can be delivered out of it you also need to identify or understand one more phenomena which is called as a performance curve of a retrospection meeting so if you see this graph it has some interesting points when you are in early adoption when the team starts following agile for the first time when the team starts conducting retrospection for the first time the team will be super excited they will think that oh you know uh, retrospection meetings are great and a lot of things are happening because of it i'm getting a chance to speak out and share something and do something uh, at that point then when the team is in maturation stage you will see that there might be a little dip the team members might think that oh you know uh, do we want to continue having the uh, the retrospection meetings do we need to do it every sprint can we skip for some of those um, and then that's where you might have little bit of dip but if you continue your focus uh, you might sail through it then what happens is you reach your organizational limits for example let's say you you want servers to install your continuous integration environment and procuring of those servers is handled by some external entity which is not even within your organization limits there is not much that your company can do anything about it they are completely dependent on a third party person to make that environment available in that case uh, people might think that oh you know why do i bother bother about it because i have tried what i could do but this is out of organization limits this means this particular issue cannot be fixed but where this particular issue will keep coming in next retro and subsequent one and the next to it and it will not get fixed because no one else uh, has a control on it it is outside of your organization limits that is where it you might see a significant tip and those are the kind of characteristics you will have to be aware of 
so that you whenever you see a dip whenever you see that we are reaching those limits you need to do something else you need to think of some other ways to keep that uh, retrospection meeting still vibrant so it is important and i would like to share some of the tips uh, tips to make sure that the retrospection meetings are effective the first one uh, like we discussed we need to keep the retrospection meetings vibrant we have to keep trying out different formats different activities different fun events during our retro meetings so that there is something new there is something exciting and it is not one of the boring meetings that team members would like to skip we need to make sure that we need to encourage as well as control participation of the team members so when i say encourage we would like everyone to participate everyone uh, to speak but in some cases we might have to control and what i mean by that is some of the scenarios we discussed earlier where if we see that someone is trying to be bully in this uh, the retrospection meetings someone is trying to force his views or if someone is trying to be command and control behavior we might have to control that so, so that team members feel that their views are respected and they can participate and share in that one of the ideas is to rotate the facilitator role so the person who is conducting the retro meeting can can be rotated it could be scrum master it could be someone else who is facilitating it because if if it is the same person doing it again and again and again he might do it in the same manner or he might start exhibiting command and control without he recognizing so rotating that could be a good idea uh, we can even invite external person to facilitate the retro meeting so that he can have a neutral uh, view and team members also can feel comfortable in sharing their thoughts and ideas and we need to make sure that all the actions that are identified from the retrospection meeting are not just saved in the word document and a spreadsheet it needs to be translated to a product backlog so if you have gone through all the uh, feedback items you have identified your top 3 items those top 3 items need to be included in your next sprint's backlog as an explicit items so they need to go in your jira version 1 rally or whatever tool that you are using it needs to be assigned to specific owners so if we have decided that we are going to install continuous integration tool or the next sprint then that needs to be an task in your agile task board and needs to be assigned to a specific person only then it will get executed otherwise it will just sit on that word document and when you come back in your next retro you will see that nothing has happened to it so it's a one of the important aspect of it so uh, to summarize is and before i summarize i would like to encourage all the participant to share their questions thoughts or views so if you have, have any questions uh, on the right hand side of your panel you will see questions tab where you can post your questions and we will take this after the summarization yeah rahul so lot of questions have been posted so uh, are you ready to take questions uh yeah just in few uh, uh seconds we we'll oh. go through summary and then we'll go to the questions area yeah yeah okay uh, so it is important to understand that agile retrospection meeting is taken seriously it's not one of the casual meetings or optional uh, activity where team members might drop in once in a while or they think that uh, it is okay to skip it uh, we would like everyone to be present we would like everyone to be there and sharing their thoughts and views uh we would like to make sure that continuous improvement is an integral aspect and is a goal of the team uh we need to make sure that scrum master or whoever is facilitating the meeting is facilitating the discussion so everyone's views are respected everyone's inputs are factored in uh we need to make sure that the retros are exciting where team members feel enthu about it they would like to be there and come to the retros and enjoy or learn something out of it and we need to make sure that we are engaging all our team members from different locations um, and if there are multiple different teams we need to make sure that we include them at uh, a program level and uh, we can make sure that we have something really really tangible uh, that's we we're, we're getting out of it okay uh, with that we can now move on to some of the questions and again if you have any questions feel free to uh, share your questions Okay the Rahul, first question yeah. yeah I'm assigning questions one by one I have assigned one question Sure yeah. So we have a question by Atulya who is saying apart from uh, scrum master who else can facilitate a retrospection meeting 
Uh, now again, uh, as I mentioned, it is actually a good idea to have different facilitators for uh, facilitating or conducting the retrospection meetings. So Scrum Master is defa default candidate, but you can also see if you have a multiple team of Scrum Masters, you can actually invite Scrum, of the Scrum Master of the other team to come to your retro and conduct it. So this is something we have tried uh, in our my previous project, where if I'm Scrum Master of Team A, I would actually invite Scrum Master of Team B to come and conduct my retrospection meeting. So he would conduct in a completely new way with a lot of new thoughts and ideas, and team members might be open to share a lot of things that they might not be uh, comfortable with, or they might be too complacent with me to share those uh, things as issues or challenges. So people who can be facilitators can be the candidates who can uh, uh, come and organize or schedule a retrospection meeting. Okay, uh, we have a question by Pratik where he asks, after collecting the actions in the retro, how to make sure that the feedback is action? Because for the next sprint, we already have a lot of tasks and activities and a lot of things are uh, being factored in. So now um, it is important to have all the actions translated into the product backlog. And we should have those entered into your product backlog, uh, Jira, Rally, or whatever tool you're using. It needs to go there as a specific task. And it should be treated as a task that is assigned to a person and even estimated. Okay, so let's say I am taking a task of installing a continuous integration server. I need time to install Jenkins. It cannot come just like that, which means I need to assign some specific time to it. And this is something that we do when we are conducting a sprint planning meeting because we might have 10 functional tasks that a product owner has identified. And then there are three additional tasks which are coming from the retrospection meeting. We can discuss with our uh, product owner and scrum master when we are conducting the sprint planning meeting for the subsequent sprint and identify that hey you know for some of the retro feedback items uh, we need these two and a half hours so we request you to provide that or consider that while factoring the capacity of the team and then for rest of the hours can be taken up or can be utilized for the functional items so it becomes a tangible item and it also gets tracked. So when you are looking at your agile task board on a daily standup, you will also see those retro actionable items. The next uh, question is by Prateep Ghosh, where he is asking some trainers suggest that product owners shouldn't be part of retro uh, and which is not there in the literature. So what is your thoughts and views on that? So one feedback or one input and again, some of you might be aware of this scenario of uh, chicken and pigs, where uh, chicken and pig decided to open up a ham and uh, eggs shop. And then, you know, chicken said, oh, you know, I'm going to lose my, I mean, uh, ham said, or a pig said that I'm going to lose my life, but you're just going to give eggs and be safe. Um, so in that context, what we say is people who are referred as pigs are people who are actually doing work on the ground. So people like team members, developers, testers, architects, designers, all of them, uh, they definitely will be part of the retrospection meeting because they have been executing and delivering tasks on the ground. And rest of the people are referred as chickens. So people that are product owners, people that are project managers, program managers, senior management, all of those are chickens. And their primary lookout is going to be, is the project on track? Or are there any issues or challenges that you guys are facing? Or is there anything that I can do to help you out? Uh, now, uh, there is no one hard and fast rule where it says that these guys can attend or cannot attend. The only rule is the people who are participating in the retrospection meeting should be with servant leadership attitude or should be with adaptive leadership styles, which means they are not coming in that room with command and control style. They're coming in that room to facilitate the meeting or they're coming in that room to help or support the team members. They're not there to drive the team members. They're not there to direct or uh, confront the team members. So if the product owner understands this, then he's very much welcome to attend the retrospection meeting where he can be there. He can listen what the team members are saying 
and some of the times we have seen that actually worked well because some team members really bluntly said in the retrospection meeting that the details of our requirements were not great detail enough user stories were just one liner or two liner user stories and that really became difficult for us uh, to implement or on day 1 of the sprint planning the story was something else and on day 5 of the sprint the story completely became something else and it is good for your product owner to hear this and then he can also make certain changes to himself or to the requirements or to things like that the only and again for this uh, why, when do you think the product owner or project managers can participate when you have good environment and healthy environment and for this you need some of the characteristics we discussed earlier you should not have dysfunctional characteristics where we do not have trust with product owner or where we are not comfortable sharing things candidly and bluntly and product owner also takes it in the right spirit okay uh, there is a question by ashish how do we conduct a dysfunctional assessment of a team and how did you conducted this so the way we conducted it is actually uh, you can go and look at and google dysfunctional as characteristics assessment you, know, you see a uh, assessment where it has all different questions and those are the kind of questions we open up the entire team is present in the meeting room or conference room and we go through those questions and together as a team we actually try to answer those questions that do we feel comfortable where we actually can tell uh, another person in my team that hey you know mahesh this is something you did is not right i think you should have done this in a different way and i am comfortable in saying that and i am comfortable that he will take it in the right spirit do we have this kind of environment team will say either yes or no then we go to the next question the next question will say that oh you know uh, do you have any fear of sharing some of the uh, thoughts do you think that people are talking a lot but there is nothing getting actionable so those kind of questions people will go through as a entire group not as a project manager or scrum master as an entire group and they would answer those questions and this can help uh, making subtle change in mindset for people especially people who are in the management uh, capacity to make sure that things are uh, being handled and executed in a proper way okay the next question is by pradeep uh, after rating the smiley uh, or after having the rating how to read or get the insight about the real problem or issues for improvement okay so uh, some of the scenarios where we discuss that you know team members can give feedback that hey you know um, i would say that uh, i would rate this particular sprint as 2 uh, out of 5 okay so we get that feedback we record it but at the same time what we also do is we discuss the specific items um, and then again we need to do it in a right way where we i ask the team members of why they think that uh, they are rating it on a uh, scale of 2 out of 5 where 2 is really on the lower side and the team members can say that hey you know i think this team was really really bad i i felt a lot of stress because we did not do estimation properly and i had to really do a lot of night outs so maybe that's something you take as an item to discuss and make some actionable points out of it okay now we'll move on to few of our uh, last qu few questions of uh, the webinar <clears throat> the next question is by ashish where uh, he is asking for a new team all the team members may not be open during the retro in sharing the feedback so how to handle such scenarios okay uh, so uh, for this exact scenario i would recommend you to play some of the innovation games because if you ask them blunt questions that hey you know what is your feedback what worked well what didn't work well some of the new team members or some of the junior team members may not be comfortable to share feedback especially if they have something uh, negative to share in that case what you do is you can have a retro i mean uh, innovation game where everyone writes their feedback on sticky notes and posts on the wall so then we don't know who has written what right it's not attached to a person his identity is not exposed but the feedback is shared and that way you can get everyone so everyone has to share that feedback in an anonymous form and then you can uh, make them speak and again it again goes back to some of the 
dysfunctional characteristics or jhari window or some of those activities where team members will feel comfortable in talking with each other uh, you will feel comfortable in being opening up sharing your feedback thoughts values and make sure that uh, even if i'm sharing something candidly it would be taken up in right spirit and it will uh, not be taken in offensive manner there is a question uh, by vijay if we have one of the team members uh, one of the team members uh, are having similar issues every time it's not getting resolved or not getting addressed which might result into team losing interest so what do you suggest so for that what i would suggest the first thing we need to do is to make them actionable and one of the way to make them actionable is to convert them in the product backlog if we keep them in word document you get my word for it that it may or may not get executed it might just stay forever but if it is translated in your product backlog everyone is looking at it during your daily stand up so it is either not started in progress or completed the ta the owner is assigned the efforts are also assigned to it so this is same as any of the other actionable items if it is blocked you need to tag it as blocked and you can raise it to your management team where they can help to get it sorted out if it is coming up in the next retro again then you need to take a pause and then this is the place where your facilitators scrum masters or management team members need to identify why this is still open and it needs to be taken up or escalated at the right uh, level and it can be taken up so it needs to be taken up as any other open requirement where uh, it is not resolved it gets an attention by appropriate people and it is taken forward similar was a question uh, by neeraj where how to make sure that the action items are recorded and uh, they're not just left there uh, so we need to have really uh, treated them as functional uh, items or user stories and need to have even acceptance criteria because we need to have people really really uh, treating them as any other item that is showing up on our product backlog so i hope this uh, some of these questions uh, answer some of the thoughts or queries that you had in mind uh, i would again like to say and as it is highlighted in this particular diagram you know uh, if we don't change anything then nothing magical is going to happen so we really have to use our retrospection meetings effectively and we really need to build right mindset only then you will see that something tangible is coming out of it and your retrospections are me becoming meaningful and not just effective that's something i wanted to cover for today's uh, session hope you liked it and got something uh, meaningful out of it so thanks a lot for joining this session and have a great day uh, to all of you thank you thanks rahul and thanks everybody for the great participation